Okay, after part one of the video in making your floor plan, you should be able to have a floor with some notches in it. You should be able, you should have some walls there as well. Um, I'm going to move this forward a little bit to get our notches as well. Hopefully you've gotten to that stage. So your floors should fit, in, uh, your walls should fit into your floors. And another one there for that wall. And I'm using the history timeline, which is incredibly useful. And you can see that I did three combines uh, to get to that stage. So from this stage, I'm going to make some windows and a door for you. Oh, and also of note is our elevator shaft is 140 millimeters wide and it is centered on your floor as a cutout. So please do that for the elevator shaft, which gives you 60 millimeters from the edge on both sides and 140 millimeters by five millimeters to get that notch. So that's where the elevator shaft is going to go and our entrance door. So first I'm going to start out with windows though. Let's get this kind of in a different orientation. You can use the cube to kind of get yourself low oriented the way you like. Okay, I like this kind of view here. So uh, I'm going to sketch on the side wall and I can make a window of any size I like really. Uh, in the end, I do like things to be nice and symmetrical and, uh, you know, fit really well. But for now, I'm just going to roughly draw it without constraints. And that's really all you need to make a window is a sketch on a wall. And what you're going to want to do is an extrude of that little square. But instead of going forwards, you can see the direction it wants to go forward would be a adding material. I actually want to go negative four. And that'll back it up through the wall. And... The default is now set to cut. It switches over to cut, but you don't want that. You don't want that. Switch that to be new body, and it's going to make a new object for us. And that is going to be body number 15 in this case. Uh, you can actually change the names on all these if you want, just as an example. You know, I could call that floor. I could call this window. And then it'll be interesting, actually, when I pattern it as well. Uh, now... Currently, they both exist in the same place. This, this wall and this window are coexisting in space. That's not good. Couldn't build it that way. So I need to actually subtract the material from the wall using the window and select cut and definitely keep the window. Okay. So now I have two separate objects that don't overlap at all. I can turn off the window and it's clear right through. And when you build your actual model, you can actually leave it blank. Or if you get around to it, we could uh, put some acrylic in there or something. Right now, it doesn't look like a window, but I can fix that by pressing A on my keyboard, which brings up the appearance toolbar. And I already have the glass selected from a previous uh, example. But to get that glass activated, you need to go in this little list here, fabric, glass. I use smooth and clear window. Boom, drag and drop it onto your window. And hey, presto, it is actually a see-through window. Cool. Now uh, I want to show you some more patterning. It can save you a lot of time. I'll select close on my appearance dialog box. I want a bunch of them. Uh, so I suggest using rectangular pattern. And if you select that one and then bodies is good. The axes, you can select anything that goes left to right. So this time, maybe I'll just pick this uh, corner of the floor. And now it wants to know how far away they want. I'm just going to kind of take a guess here. This is sometimes a bit of trial and error. Uh, so 60 isn't enough, maybe 80. Okay, maybe 120. So depending on how big you drew it and how far apart you want them and how many you want, you know, that looks pretty nice, and I just want maybe a couple more I can increase. Oh, but oh, I don't like extents very much. I suggest spacing. That's why it's not cooperating. So something like this maybe, uh, and it's the spacing between them, maybe 50. And then uh, zoom out a little bit here. I'm getting better. There's still more space on this side than this side. I would want to fix that. So here's what you might do. You can go back into the original sketch. You know, we could back it up if we wanted. And now there's no window, uh Oh, but there is a sketch for the window. I can double click on that and get back into it and start dimensioning it. I dimension pretty much everything because I like perfection myself. So I haven't done all the math on this, but what if I did 20 from the side and then uh, from the top, maybe, I don't know, I like 10, sure. 
And then from the bottom, I like 10 as well. Maybe to that. And 10 is good there. Starting to look better. And then, you know, pick a value for this. It's close to 40, so maybe I choose 40. And maybe the math will work out. Um, and then I can click OK. And then that can drag my history marker along to see what it did. And then, you know, go to the stage where I combined it. And then I patterned it. Okay, so there's all my windows. It's looking better. There's still too much space on this side, so I can go back into the pattern itself and increase it to maybe 60. Okay, so divide up your area. Oh, that looks quite close. I would still want to fix it now. It's not enough material on this side uh, compared to the left side, but you get the idea. Do the math on uh, the sides and try to make it really nice, and you can do as many windows as you want. Do you see a problem with the other three windows, the new ones? See a problem? They are coexisting again with the wall. You're going to want to do a combine, which will remove material from the wall using all three this time windows. Okay? And keep the windows needs to be selected and cut needs to be selected. And that's as easy as that. We have four windows. I want to make the other side completely symmetrical. I want to show you uh, the mirror tool again. So I'm going to mirror uh, all four of these bodies and the mirror plane itself I believe is the XZ plane you may have to open up the origin menu and select the XZ and see if that works yeah beautiful and say okay to that I have four brand new windows guess what you need to do with the wall and the windows again combine wall window 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 cut keep the windows and voila eight windows now okay last thing I want to show you is a door then okay on this surface you need an entrance door right where the elevator shaft fits in do it right in the middle please we're going to sketch right on this back wall and we're going to make our door I measured our classroom door and it was uh, going to be 18 wide total and 43 tall so we need to dimension some things here. I want to make sure it's centered. So that is going to be a nine. And then likewise, the other side to the midpoint is going to be the same as this dimension. So that's nice. I want to collinear the bottom of the door with the floor itself. And then I dimension the height. And there, 43. There we go. That's the same size as our classroom door. That's all I need. I'm done. I am going to extrude it. Do you remember what I'm going to put here? If we want to have it go into the wall, we have to put negative four. Do not want to cut because that would just leave. If I do it, it's okay. It'll leave a hole. I don't want that. I'm going to go back into the extrude itself and give me a new object. And that'll give me my door. And... Right now they're coexisting, the wall and the door, that's not good. Combine wall with door as a cut, but keep the door okay. And so now they are actually two separate bodies. Uh, and I can give it a, a fresh appearance. Um, there is a section down here for wood. Right here. And maybe I'll choose a new one this time. How about walnut? drag drop onto my door oh I don't that one didn't come out very good maybe cherry might look better ah that's much better okay close my dialog box uh, one last thing is uh, just to be extra cool I'm going to rotate my door so it looks like it's open there is a move function right in the middle select your door and then we need a, a rotate instead of a move the axis is actually going to be this one right here, the corner of your door. I don't want to copy, so that is good, body. And then rotate, and how many degrees? Uh, it could be any number, really. Let's say 45. And that should be done. And from the top view, I can see that now my door is extra cool because it looks open. And that's how you make windows and doors.